Good evening and welcome to another installment of me, John, talking aimlessly about the fetch decode execute cycle. In the previous video, we talked mostly about the theory of the fetch decode execute cycle and the CPU. But now it's time to look at it in action. This is the little man computer. And what this program is designed to do is visually demonstrate the process that the CPU goes through. So I've got a simple little program set up here that will add two numbers together. This program here is written in assembly language. An assembly language is basically a language that is slightly higher than machine code. Now when I say slightly higher, I'm talking in relationship to the hardware. So the lowest language that we can program in is machine code. And an example of a high level programming language is Python. Now the higher you go up, the easier it is to read in standard English. Now in this program here, you can see the different components that we've already talked about. We've got our inputs and our outputs. Inside the CPU, we've got our program counter, our instruction register, our address registers, accumulator, and arithmetic logic unit. Connected to that, uh, using the buses, you can see we've got RAM. RAM, we refer to in the little man computer as mailboxes. So we've got 99 mailboxes there. And these are just small little bits of memory where we can store parts of our program. Now this code might look a little bit confusing to what you've seen before. However, what we need to do is we need to be sure that we know what the difference is between opcodes and operands. So the opcode is responsible for telling the processor what job needs to be done. And the operand specifies the data that needs to be acted on. Here you can see an example of the different opcodes that are available to us. The XX is actually the operand, and that's the place where we are going to store our data. The one is the opcode. This is used to represent the add function. Number two is used to subtract a number at a given mailbox address. Number three is a quite an important one. STA means store the value into the mailbox at the given location. Number five, LDA means load a value from a mailbox. Number six, seven, and eight are all selection. Now the branches are used to implement selection. So for example, if statements and conditions. The branches can interfere with a process called pipelining. And pipelining is the process where each instruction is carried out one after another in sequence. In an ideal world, each instruction is carried out one after another and the process can continue. But if jumps occur, then it can jump your processes to a different instruction each time and therefore interrupt the pipelining process. This causes inefficiency. Now opcode 901 and 902 have no operands because they don't necessarily need to store any information anywhere. Opcode 901 is responsible for getting an input from the user and the input will be stored in the accumulator. Opcode 902 is responsible for outputting the contents of the accumulator to the user. Now let's start watching what the program actually does. You'll see two little red circles and one will go to the arithmetic logic unit. Now in your assembly language code, the first instruction to be carried out is 00INP. And that means at mailbox position 0, there is an input command. Now we look before and we know that an input is 901. So 9 is placed in the instruction register and 01 in the address register. Then I'll just quickly type in a number and press enter. After typing in the number 12, that then goes into the accumulator. The program counter is again incremented by 1. Now you would see that the program counter was set to 01. And that means we're running an STA or a store command and we're going to put the result of the accumulator in the mailbox 99. Once that command's finished, we move on to 02, which is another input command. So we do exactly the same process again. We take a 901, we take it back and then the input from the user, which I'll type in 8 and press enter. And once that's done, then that's then stored in the accumulator again. 
Now, command number three is an add command, and it says add the contents of mailbox 99. So we go to mailbox 99 and we take the number 12 out, we bring it back, and we take the contents of the accumulator and the data stored in mailbox 99 and we take it to the arithmetic logic unit where it's added together to get the result of 20. This is then stored in the accumulator. Then we run command number four, which is an output. Now we know from before the output basically outputs the contents of the accumulator to the user. Finally, command five will take the contents of mailbox five, which is zero, 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 and that will halt our program. And that's the end of video two. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, by now you're starting to piece together what is actually going on inside your CPU. But if you're still struggling, in the next video, I will summarize the process for your exam.